What I always say to to people is like, you get something from the, a commercial sort of organic farm versus if you plant it yourself from a seed that we've sent you in a sealed container that goes into a system that only you have access to and you grow it from seed. And like, I guarantee you that's going to be better for you and safer. You're a chef and you're thinking about how to venture into the private chef space, how to set yourself up for success from resume to first interactions with your clients as well as succeeding at the job. Our one-on-one -on -one coaching got you covered. Go to www.privatechef.cc and connect with me. Decades of experience can be your support to seize the next Private Chef opportunity. Welcome to the Private Chef podcast, serving the 1%. I'm your host, Hannes Hedgy, and on our show, we speak to the best chefs, how they honed in on their skills to excel in the industry what it takes to work as a private chef for some of the most exclusive clients in the world. Welcome back to the Private Chef Podcast. I'm your host, Hannes Henschi. And today our guest is Sean Paul Kirolis, the co-founder and CEO of FarmShelf. FarmShelf is a smart indoor farming system designed to grow leafy greens and herbs in the comfort of your home or restaurant kitchen. In this episode, JP will discuss his passion for nutritious food the inspiration behind this innovation indoor farm, and the unique features and benefits it offers to chefs and communities alike. Thank you for joining us, JP. Thank you for having me, Hannes. So what was your initial idea behind launching Farm Shelf? You know, we looked around and so much of our produce is being shipped across the country. You know, you and I live in New York and most of it's coming from California most of the year. And this is our most perishable food, right? And it's on a truck uh, for a week Uh, at least before it gets to our table, right? And the technology was there to grow it, you know, where you were, where you're actually cooking, where you're enjoying a meal. We saw the technology in various spaces and said, let's put this together, right? And let's make it easy for people to grow their own food inside, in their restaurant, in their home, and bring the flavors that you get when you go to the farmer's market in the middle of the summer in the Northeast, right? And that, that arugula is really spicy and those flavors are just popping, right? And we said, we can do this all year round, right? And the technology is there and the price of the technology had come down, specifically the LED lighting, um, so that it was possible to do because, you know, 15 years ago, it would just be too expensive. It just, it wouldn't be worth it for anybody. So <clears throat> you've seen this proliferation of vertical farming and in the last, you know, five, 10 years because of the cost has come, come way down. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, make it easy to grow your own food and enable people to, to enjoy produce that is, you know, there's a joy factor, right? So so many people love to garden, right? But you can only garden a few months out of the year, again, depending on your climate. Unless you live in Florida. <laughs> unless you live in, unless you live in Florida, but then, you know, listen, growing food is hard, right? If anybody's ever done it, you know, you got to deal with pests, you got to deal with soil, you got to deal with climate. Even if you're in Florida, certain things that, you know, are, are going to take well to the intense heat all the time. So there's a lot of factors and a lot of people, I, I certainly failed so many times trying to grow things, you know, outside and, and uh, there's just so many factors. So we control all those factors and make it so your, your chances, you know, are, are pretty close to, to, uh, to perfect of, gr of growing what you want to grow. Funny that you said, I literally just bought an outdoor plant that I put on my balcony and I almost killed it within the first month till I figured how to deal with it. <laughs> so there's, there's truth in everything you just said. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not easy. So that's what we try to do. We try to, uh, try to take, you know, we like to say we're the green thumb in the cloud, right? We're there monitoring the unit. It's a smart system, sensors and cameras, and we can sort of help guide you. And hopefully the, The system itself is, is just running smoothly on its own. And we could talk more about how it works. But So, yeah, why don't you explain a little bit how it works? You did mention there's sensors there's, and cameras. Are there there's cameras mm -hmm. inside? Cameras just looking at the plants. <laughs> so, you know, to take a step back, right, it's, a hi it's hydroponics. Hydroponics means yeah. there's no soil, okay? So it is a um, conti continuous water uh, that is running from the tank up through the shelves. And so if you were to, to lift up the shelves uh, of the farm shelf, you would just see, oh yeah, there you go. You would just see the roots and the water. And we have 
dosed that water with exactly the right amount of nutrients. So when I say nutrients, you could say plant food, you could say fertilizer, people think, you know, but those are your nutrient cartridges. And so the system is going to automatically do that. And all the science here, and we're going to accommodate for if you have, if you live in Texas and your water is a certain hard or softness, if you live in New York, if you live in California, and we're going to put in, you know, exactly the right of pH buffers up and down and the nutrients. And what we're trying to do is make sure your plants have exactly what they need. We're trying to mimic what's happening outside. The LED lighting is the sun, right? The nutrients are, you know, the fertilizer and, and the, the proper soil, airflow, climate control. And what you should get is delicious produce tastes the way it's supposed to taste in the peak of summer. So what happens is you have your farm shelf. We have a, a subscription and you can choose from 60, 60 different uh, types of leafy greens and herbs. And so you choose what you want to grow. We send you these seed pods and they are pre-seeded and um, they just have a little bit of a, of, of a peat moss media. Um, it's not, again, it's not soil, but there's something that carries the, the seed and it goes into a hidden nursery that's at the base. I don't know if you want to pull up a yeah. I think I can maybe on the on the top here. on the very on the very top of the website you you'll, you can see a photo of the system itself. It might be right. So uh, those are your three your three upper growing shelves. There's a nursery that's hidden below that you don't see there. And this that, one, yeah. yeah, it's well, it's next to that. And because oh, the, okay. the nursery is where you put those plant pods. Right in the beginning. And they are, they have their own climate control. They have their own water source and their own lighting. And it's a different phrase of the plant, right? It's sprouting and then it's coming to maturity. And so you're growing in that enclosed nursery that's hidden, um, while you're growing in these upper shelves. And we, you know, we're going to coach you through all this. After a couple of weeks in that nursery, the plant is established and it can be moved up and it's physically moved up by the customer and it's, Think of an espresso. It's like the, the economists call this espresso for lettuce. You pull it out, you pop it in the, in the upper shell. Once it's in there, that's your – it's glass. We think it's beautiful, right? I mean, yeah. everybody you – know, plants are beautiful. They bring joy. And watching your food grow in front of you, whether you're a chef or a student or – I think we think anybody is an incredible thing to, to witness. And by the way, it happens even faster in our system. And uh, like two or three times faster than outside. And then like, so right now you see basil on the top. We have shiso. I know your audience knows what it is, but, um, you know, otherwise known as, as like a Japanese mint or perilla. Um, I think we did have head lettuce on the bottom shelf. Now, by the way, you could grow 10 different things at once, but for this particular system in, that, in this photo shoot, it was one per shelf. The, the shiso and the basil will just keep regrowing, right? So you'll go in there. Um, and if you're a home chef, you're going to harvest what you need. You're going to use it for that meal, or maybe you're going to put it, put it in the fridge for, for later on. But essentially you use your, your, you are harvesting on demand. So you're getting like the freshest, best tasting produce with all the nutrients. And I'm not talking, you know, I'm talking about the nutritional content. And, you know, one thing we didn't talk about, Hannes, like why we started this is like, we want people to have a connection to their food again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You go to Whole Foods and you're, you know, fairway or wherever your supermarket is and you grab a head of lettuce, you don't know where it came from. Chances are, you know, it came from California or Arizona and sat on a truck and got handled by, you know, 10 different people. But you don't even know if you're a kid, like, where does that come from? Right. So this yeah. gets us closer, gets us closer to our food. And just to finish the thought, you know, these, this produce, because everybody wants to know, like, how fast does it grow? How long does it last? Those crops in there, that, chi that, that chiso, that basil, you'll have it in there for, six to eight weeks, maybe even longer if you want to. And you're just, it's going to keep regrowing. Now the lettuce is a little bit differently. That's more of a head. You're going to cut it off and um, it's, you know, kind of one and done as we say, but you've got, you're going to have backups in the nursery that are ready to take its place and they'll be, you know, ready within a week. Sometimes in the garden, we just cut the head of the lettuce and it regrows like a little bit smaller, <clears throat> maybe two more times and it before it's like actually done. Yes. The answer is you can do that in a farm shelf. We, our, uh, our plant team gets pretty particular about flavor. That second regrowth on the head lettuce, you take a, a butter lettuce, for instance, it's going to be a little bit bitter yeah. on the, on the regrowth. If you don't mind that, sure. Yeah. It, it'll work. We, we've just found, again, we're preaching about, and I think that you're, you and your clients are looking for like, if you want it to be that the best possible flavors, um, We don't recommend the second growth, but it's there. But 
you know, kale, arugula, mustard greens, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. There's so many greens that you put in your salad that'll just, they just keep, they just keep growing. So I, I tend to go down and the head lettuce is sort of like the base, but then I just, I've got five or six different greens and you can't really do that unless you have a garden, whether it's outside yeah. or inside, because chances are you're not going to get that many, you know, unless you're really into it. Um, you're probably not going to have five or six different greens in your fridge at all times. So this kind of expands. I like to, it expands my cooking, right? And because I, I'm using things that I didn't usually use and it's just because I have access to them. And it, it, it probably gives you a variety that you can really not have. Like if I think about the Hamptons, okay, we have gardens, uh, but then still with the garden, I need to speak with the gardener and we don't, obviously there are seasons and especially with microgreens, it can get a little bit tricky because the gardener then again is also not there all the time. So the conditions are not favorable for all the microgreens. But but if I think about this, you know, we you can probably run eight different microgreens in there in smaller batches. And and this way you at all times you you can have like Michelin star level greenery around yeah. your entire dishes. Yeah. We have some people that grow who love growing microgreens and sprouts with our system. It's not something that we technically support the the system is made for plants whereas you know it's a different media so it would be like a mat that you would put down but it's it's doable and certainly mm -hmm. we can talk later but you know you're a vip clientele and we'll we'll certainly make that work if it's something that they they want um but back to sort of the 60 things that we do grow and some of the ones that you know we reference shiso right or zater i i my background is lebanese i grew up eating eating zatar and when we started farm shelf the middle eastern grocer in brooklyn sahadis came to me and said hey could we grow zatar you know and, and <laughs> people think of the spice mixture they don't know that it's an zatar is a is a um you know is a plant too um sort of a, i would say a cousin to to thyme and oregano and it basically grows wild in you know in the fields of lebanon but so we grow zatar it's wonderful it's hard to find fresh zatar anywhere um yeah yeah there you go You got the shisa there. And, yeah, yeah they're just, just giving they're still, some visual to what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, abso absolutely. I mean, the, some of this you can get and some of it uh, you're going to have a hard time, you know, finding. V flowering viola. There's a section on there on flowering greens. And right. So this is either hard to find or, um, you know, incredibly expensive, which See, yeah, I know is less of a concern it, for your, yeah. Even if you find it, like you, like for example, if we go to uh, Citarella in Southampton or something, we might be able to find it. Again, what you just said, the the price is is a, is a different matter. It's prohibitive almost. That, uh, but then at the same time, it's not always as fresh as you want it. Like actually, down here, the viola flowers, those sometimes I I got those in in the garden, and it's just of a different quality when you just pick them compared when they've been right. traveling. Scroll up. I, I, I always love to talk about hyssop, the an anise hyssop. Yep. And I don't know, you know, again, hard to find, not at your average store. And this has that, you know, just when you fresh pick it, incredible licorice anise flavor, which this is one of these things, whether you're, you're making a cocktail out of it or, you know, whatever you're using it for. It's, it's one of these things that I found when we started Farm Shelf. It was a wonderful sort of surprise because I didn't even know. I don't know. Have you ever... I'm sure you have, but like, do you, do you see hyssop much in your shopping or have you grown it? Shopping, sometimes they have individual flowers in the mix, but you don't get it individually where you, where you have like a batch of, of it by itself. Right. So, um, yeah, but you, you hit the nail on the head. Like if, if you can find it, you're probably not going to find it as fresh. And then these are the, these are the, these are the greens that I, you know, I like to grow because they, they're going to come back week after week and, yep. um, And they just keep giving, and they're just absolutely delicious, right? You know, yeah. you know, you way, know everybody uh, who's on audio right now, we're looking at Swiss chard and Blood Magic Kale and uh, French Sorrel and Portuguese Kale and uh, Arugula. Yeah, I think that like if you go to this, if you go and get Arugula in the winter time, and it comes in that clamshell, even if it's at a great, even if it's at Citarella or, or Whole Foods, it doesn't have that flavor that you get when you get it at the farmer's market in the summer, right? Actually, I feel like food has been, in a way, degenerated over the decades that we don't even know what the OG original was like. Like what we're eating now, and it, it, take a basic like a carrot. Like when you're biting into a carrot, even if it's at Whole Foods, 
It has nothing to do with the kind of carrot that my grandma used to pick out of the soil and give me as a child. The flavors are just not there. It's, it's, it's in, a, in a way the products that we got used to are so, so much pushed into a direction where they're more shelf stabilized, you know, and it's, it's optimized for commerce more than flavor. Sorry for the interruption. We will be right back. And if you're a chef thinking about venturing into the private chef space, this is for you. We coach you on how to set yourself up for success from resume to first interactions with your clients, as well as succeeding at the job. Our one-on-one -on -one coaching got you covered. Go to www.privatechef.cc and connect with me. Decades of experience can be your support to seize the next private chef opportunity. Y yes. Yes. And again, that's why I said, like, we want to bring people closer to their food. And also, like, you shouldn't have to worry about your food, right? You shouldn't have to worry about, like, where, you know, you probably don't know where it came from, but who, who handled it and uh, what, how it was genetically modified, right? Like, to get to that carrot that you're getting now, which yeah, I, I find that with, like, I don't know what happened to bananas, right? Like, they're just... <laughs> They go from green to like they're they're ripe for a day and then they're they're brown, right? It's like I don't know what happened to the bananas that we used to eat when we were kids, but um, I, I find it really interesting when you see the real OG banana, you know, where there is a lot less more seed inside, and the whole banana is completely different than what we eat as a commercial banana today. So one of the things that you, you, we were looking at before was was uh, amaranth. And that is, do you, have you ever, do you, do you get that much? Yeah, we use it occasionally more, more like mixed again. It's nothing that yeah. you use straight up so much. Yeah. But that's one we did, we did a, um, we did some work with the crop trust, um, and the crop trust is responsible for, you know, they have, you know, saved in vaults. Um, I think there's seven of them around yeah. the world and you're nodding your head, you know about it, right? It's, it's like a Noah's Ark of seeds. Every seed that ever has, has been is saved. And they give us access. They cloned some of them. They gave us access. And that's where our amaranth comes from. Um, and that is like an, you know, an ancient green that got a little lost. And uh, we're, we're bringing it back. You see it here and there. But uh, it's beautiful. It's red and green. And um, it's we lost the, the plot a little bit with food. I mean, it's, it's hard to feed, you know, 8 billion people, right? And um, so big food has to exist. But it's, um, it's nice for those of us and certainly you and, you know, your clientele that you know, can get the best produce and can get the best of everything. And so... Well, I think the, the interesting thing is the trend that I see with our clients is there's a lot of awareness where they even are like, hey, we don't want you to go to Whole Foods. You know, like, yes, it's already better like than what the, maybe the majority of the regular supply chain what comes through. Uh, but we really want you to go to the local farms. We want you to get the freshest and the most nutritious and, and they care for the health of the family in, the, in that regard. And I, and I think that's, that's exactly the, the kind of um, people we, we like to work with. Yeah. I mean, we, we um, not open, not to open up a can of, can of worms on this, but you know, everybody always wants to know, you know, is it organic, right? And, and the answer is organic is about soil. Right, it, organic is 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 about your soil, and we don't have soil, so we can't be called um, organic. Our seeds are organic, by the way. They come from a great um, supplier called Johnny's in Maine. But my point is, what I always say to to people is like, you get something from the, a, a commercial sort of organic farm versus if you plant it yourself from a seed that we've sent you in a sealed container that goes into a system that only you have access to, and you grow it from seed, and like. I guarantee you that's going to be, you know, better for you and safer than something that might have been grown organically again in California and sat on a truck, you know, for for a week. But there is something special about knowing, and of course, you lose half the nutrients, right, w when you have it on a truck for a week. So, yeah, we we have the nutrition thing covered for you, um, in on us, and um, and also just this like you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to, you know, you know, you know where it came from because. In theory, you're the only person who's ever touched it, right? You don't have to wash. We always joke that we're going to do a um, an ad campaign one day about like, you know, it's bad news for salad spinners because for the salad spinner industry, because you don't need to wash our produce, right? There's no pesticides. There's nobody touching it. There's no soil, right? You know, I love it when I can bring someone in front of one of our units and I just harvest it and they can put it in their mouth and eat it. So 
Yeah, the that, only only question is, have you washed your hands before eating? It's that's not that to wash is well, salad. well. I would be I would be wearing I would be wearing gloves if I was feeding it to you. But yes, that that is right. <laughs> <laughs> I I can only you know do so much on the food safety. At, at the end of the day, it's going to be did the did the person do his job? Yeah. So how does the cycle look like? How long does it take to actually have a meaningful amount of produce that you can harvest? So it's going to take um, a couple of weeks from seed pod to that established plant, and that is underneath, right? Um, and then you're going to move it up, and it's going to be a couple more weeks, maybe you know a week to ten days, till it gets to its harvestable state. So, but there's something that you have to take into account, which is once we get to that state where you can harvest it, as I mentioned, you've now got you bet three or four pounds of produce that's coming out of the system every week, right? So yep. for the average family, it's more, quite frankly, it's it, it's probably more than you need, maybe different for, for you and, and what you're, you're cooking. But, and then when that crop rotation is over, right? When it's, and we'll tell you when it says like, okay, and you as a, as a chef will know the basil. Most people probably say like, basil tastes fine. It looks fine. Let's keep going. We'll say after six to eight weeks, the stems are starting to get woody. The flavor might start getting just a, just a touch off, right? It's time to fully harvest that. But remember, you've got the the seedlings right underneath, and they're already they've already been growing, right? So then you put those up, and you're a week from harvest on that shelf. So the answer is you're never running out of produce. There will be yeah. a week or ten days when you're in that in between the cycle when you went from the the, the nursery plants to to harvestable. So my farm shelf at my house always has a steady stream of, of greens it, it never literally never runs out the interesting thing is well so you have the subscription basically for like uh 22 dollars a week you have all that produce a, amazing variety different flowers different salads correct and i think variety is the answer right i mean again you're putting you know you know i want to speak to your to your audience right they are but you got to cook something different every night and you got to impress your uh, principal, right, every night. And um, I think to have that variety at your fingertips, you know, I know, again, for, for myself, like, I go to, you know, there's a, there's a great Japanese restaurant in the West Village, and they have a garlic shiso rice, which, you know, we kind of fell in love with it. Like, we can make that because we have shiso, you know, because I always have, I love shiso, I always have it. You know, or if we get some fresh, you know, you get some fresh tuna in the Hamptons, and you want to do sashimi, and you got the shiso, it's right there, right? And so I think it's, it enables you not to have to to necessarily like yeah you you shop you at the farmers market you see what you want to you're inspired right and you get inspired from like okay I've got the fish oh I'm growing this at home you know so it's just it it kind of alters your how you plan a meal a bit in a, in the in the best possible way right it's just it's just fun and it, and um, listen you and your your colleagues you're going to be the one who's who's operating it and, and harvesting it, I think that's the greatest part of it, right? To go and harvest the greens and people do it because it's meditative and it is, is it's a wonderful thing. And to be like close to your food in that way. So one of the homes I used to work in, like on the way into the kitchen, I would always go through the garden. And, and that was so cool. Like that's how I started my day. You know, there's sun, there's like fresh produce. I, I just take the scissors and I, I start harvesting for whatever I'm using for lunch and go inside and, and like prepare right from there. Yeah, there's, listen, this, this is something that I always have a hard time sort of getting across. But listen, if you see a farm shelf out in the wild, you see it at a restaurant, you know, and by the way, when we started this, you know, we got, we got some great chefs like Jose Andres and, and Marcus Samuelson, um, Klaus Meyer to sort of work with us. And believe it or not, there's a recipe, there's a plant recipe that goes into it. So you do something with the LEDs and you give them a little more reds or a little more blues. You can actually affect the flavor of the produce. So what, you know, what you're going to get with farm shelf is like, I always like to say, well, if it was good, good enough for Jose Andres, it's you know, probably good enough for the rest of us. Right. And, um, <laughs> but we, Geez, I lost my train of thought here. I, I, I got sidelined on these uh, celebrity chefs. But you were talking oh, about how you can manipulate the flavor yeah. within the, in the blend. If you're well, giving yeah, it so a little you, bit of a different light. You can manipulate the, the flavor. Oh, I know what I was, I, I was going to say. Just when you see this out in the wild, right, you sort of get it because it's like there's a wow factor, right? And the lights are, you know, and the plants are beautiful. When you have it in your house or if you have it in a, you know, we have students having their cafeterias in school. The the joy you get, like this is what we were talking about, the garden, you like to walk through the garden. 
it's hard to sort of like quantify that, right? Just, just to see it. Like, just like why people like to live on a farm, right? Or, you know, and, uh, or have a garden, right? Which not everybody can. They don't have the land. They don't have the weather. You guys have the land and the weather for, because you're probably chasing, you're probably chasing the good weather all the time, right? In the various houses. Yeah, homes. exactly. But, um, but for you who's inside cooking to be able to see that and that there's a, there's just a joy factor. And I think that like the other thing is, and I think this will be, you know, special for your clientele is, so I have, um, just where I happen to have it. I have my kitchen upstairs. I have my farm shelf downstairs. And when I have dinner parties, right? Like much the way somebody might show off their wine cellar, right? I bring them downstairs to show off my farm shelf, right? Um, <laughs> it's a very exclusive item, right? We're all going to make, we're only going to build and ship 250 uh, of these this year, right? Like virtually nobody has one, right? So like to be able to bring like somebody down- Limited edition Porsche. Yeah, right, right. And yeah, to bring somebody downstairs and open it up and feed them out of it. And like, that probably be, will, will be the interaction that your, your clients have with it. The rest of the time, you'll, you know, the, the chef will, will, will tend to it, but there's a cool, there's a wow factor to it, uh, that I think that your, um, your principals will, will enjoy. And then there, and then the kids, you know, I don't care who it is, right? Whether you know, everybody like, you know, kids, like they don't know where their food comes from, as we, we said earlier, right? And like, so, my daughter, she's eight and she helps me, you know, she helps with the seed pods and then we monitor it and we move them up. And she's like, and this is a girl who's like, you know, allergic to vegetables like a lot of kids are, but she eats the kale that she grew, right? And she, you know, she knows that the Portuguese kale that we grow is like the best kale that you can get and it's softer and, it, you know, like, and so I think there is something about A, doing something with your kids, but also like giving them the education and then getting them to, um, you know, to just to, to, to have a healthier, uh, you know, a healthier diet and, and eat, eat yeah, more of those And greens. a healthier relationship with, with nature. It's like, especially in a city like New York, you think everything just comes from the corner store and people only know the price of things, not the value of things. Like they don't know what nature had to do or farmers had to do to get it on that shelf, you know? Uh, all, all they see, it's there and it has a price and that's it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I always feel like if we can do something so that kids will listen, an indoor hydroponic growing system is not exactly like how most produce is grown, but it is the same idea. And if that gets them thinking and talking about like, wait a second, where does the rest of my, my fruit and vegetable come from? Right. And yeah. have a relationship and then go outside of the garden. And then, you know, my, our, our plant scientist brought my son some, um, he's really into spicy peppers and, and, uh, she brought him some, some ghost peppers seeds that, you know, he, he started in the farm shelf and they brought him outside. And so there is a little bit of back and forth that you can have and have and fun with the systems, um, bringing certain plants that won't grow in, that will only grow to a certain height because he has a form factor of the farm shelf yeah. when they get really big, but you can bring them outside. And so, um, that's another way you guys can have some fun with it get, and get the gardener involved. Is the, is the light on 24 hours or do they need rest? No. Lights on, um, it is 16 on and eight off. The lights are dimmable. So if it is in a, in a place that is, you know, for instance, when I'm showing off the farm shelf for, at, you know, for a dinner party, I'll, I'll often dim the lights. So just as so they're a little bit, but, but the, it, it's behind, um, it's behind a tinted glass. So it's in no way, um, you know, difficult to, uh, but do the plans need that break of eight hour lights or is it just, yes. uh, yeah. yeah, they like the, they like the light. Yeah. They like to sleep. I can show you my farm shelf if you want. <laughs> you let me know. If you want to take a little tour, we'll go look at it. Yeah. Um, um, I know it's harder. You got people listening, so that, that maybe that's not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, I find it so interesting. So, so plants sleep. And does that mean you don't want to water them too at that time when they sleep? No, no. I mean, I don't know if it's sleeping, but just think about wh what we're trying to do is mimic what's happening outside, right? Okay. So plants have eight hours of darkness. So, um, you know, this is about the photosynthesis and, you know, so you, there's certain plants that like full light. There's certain plants that like partial light. Right. Um, and so we can adjust our lighting, you know, based on that, but leafy greens and herbs, and that's what we're growing right now in the system. Eventually we'll do some other things. They, they like a full day of light, which is about 16 hours on and eight hours off. Um, and, um, so the, and again, that's the lighting recipe that we, you know, I was alluding to when you sort of. You know, we sort of, we did a lot of R&D to find out, like, what's the right seed for the right amount of light, you know, and, and the right 
nutrients, and that's where that plant recipe comes in. So yes, we like to give the plants uh, their time to uh, to to rest. Not exactly sleep, but we can call it that. Nice. So when you when you have that in the shelf, and and maybe if you want, you can we, we can go to your shelf, and um and you can explain it at the shelf itself. Let's we'll give it a try. We're we're walking. For those of you listening, I'm just walking out of my home office here, and um, we're gonna just show you the farm shelf. You see that? Oh yeah. So this is the system, and um, you know you're gonna see. I'm gonna open it up. You see, we we dim the lights when you open it, and you can see sort of like that is red vein sorrel. Got a bunch of head lettuces. I got some kale, some baby kale that's coming up. Um, some chives, basil. I didn't precisely get it ready for the for the, but that is, um, and then the nursery and the nutrients is are underneath. And this is an older model, quite frankly. So the one that that your clients are getting, getting is a little bit more advanced. But that is um, this is the commercial one, the original one that you. This is the original. This is the original. This is the original one. Yeah. yeah. This is the commercial yeah. one. How so, heavy uh, is the unit? Uh, it's three hundred pounds. Three hundred um, pounds. So three hundred pounds. It is um, the stack up, so you can. You know, in terms of like the size, it, it's about a third smaller than this one. So it's four feet wide, six and a half feet tall, and about two feet deep, right? So it's just going to go. And I literally like I used to have a, a bookshelf there, and we replaced it with our farm shelf. And um, <laughs> is that where the name came from? Well, it was catchy. I mean, it is a it is a because a farm you had to shelf. replace your bookshelf. It, I, I, yeah, no, I mean this 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 was only in the last couple of years, but um, yeah, that's the um. That's the trip down to the wine cellar, right, or the or the farm shelf. <laughs> nice, I love it. Yeah, and it it makes like a really good. I mean, depending, especially if I think of the kind of kitchens I've worked in, you know, you can really make that a centerpiece between. Like sometimes we have uh, huge stainless steel fridges, and you can, if you have like an indoor architect or someone, uh, and and you put that in between some of the designs, the kitchen and the lights. Or, I, I think. That there can be some really badass looks. We, with, with yeah, yeah, I mean that's we've we've got a handful of customers that have done that. They've built it into their kitchen. And that's listen. That's our dream. Our dream is that you have your farm shelf, you know, built in like your refrigerator, right? And then just you know, for anybody out there who remembers the show, the Jetsons, you know, it's like they just like the food was on demand right in their kitchen, right? And uh, that exists now, right? Just to open up your farm shelf in your kitchen and like. Your herbs are right there, and um, so uh, that is absolutely possible. Yeah, awesome. Well, JP, this has been uh, super interesting. Th thank you so much for making time to introduce me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, this is a it's a, it's a very cool, unique product, you know. That I I think there's definitely a, a cup. I actually, while we were talking, there, there's a few clients that I think would really appreciate something like that. I mean, I'm happy to give my name to, I don't know how it works, but if you want me to, like I'm, for your clientele, if they want to just reach out to me directly, I'm happy to help them out. So J, jp at farmshelf.com. It's that easy. And uh, <laughs> Awesome. Or they, or they can get you through me. But um, I, it's, uh, you guys are an exciting uh, group, like, because it's not often you get the, you get the chefs who really get it and the people who, you know, can afford it and uh, and want to put it in their homes. Thank you for joining us at the Private Chef Podcast. If you know any highly skilled chefs that want to take their life to the next level, make sure to share this podcast with them. And if you enjoyed this episode, click subscribe and check out our upcoming episodes. Thank you for listening.